Chapter 2. The Absolute Truth Absolute truth is based on a demonstrable principle, a fact. Unless one perceives and accepts this principle as his basis of all reasoning, he has nothing to demonstrate and no rule for its demonstration. Absolute truth is devoid of all theories for so-called error cannot be used in stating the truth about God and man. The problem of nothingness or dust to dust has been solved and mortal mind is without form and void. For individuals are beholding themselves as they actually are, namely spiritual beings in heaven here and now. Absolute truth does not approach principle. It is always at the standpoint of spiritual understanding and is demonstrated from that basis. Principle is all in all. It is both cause and effect, for there can be nothing but oneness. There is nothing supernatural for all that supremely natural to our spiritual senses, the only senses which we possess. It is not supernatural for good to sustain and support the manifest universe, including man, for good is permanent. Neither is it supernatural for us to prove our omnipresent principle, just as Jesus proved his divinity right here on earth. To believe that the manifest universe, including man, is governed by material laws, which must be overcome before one can attain spiritual consciousness, is to doubt and deny the omnipotence of spiritual laws and refutes man as the true image and likeness of good. Just as the utilization of numbers demonstrates the principle of mathematics, so the exercise of your spiritual power demonstrates your principle, good, and is equally natural. Popular theology has never given the true interpretation of God and His manifestation. We cannot adulterate the absolute truth with false beliefs, which do not even deserve a title, no matter how erroneous or mythical that title may be. One might exercise every conceivable theory in an attempt to overcome that which seems to oppose good, only to awaken to the fact that he has been combating nothing but his own false beliefs. He has not even been deluded, for there is but one mind, and it cannot be deluded or deceived. There is no one to be changed, for man is spiritual and perfect now. You shall know the truth about yourself here and now, and the truth shall make you free. Understanding that your identity is soul, not body, and that soul reflects God, the only self, you become self-governed. There is but one mind, your mind and my mind, therefore all visible manifestation are under the dominion of your mind. You cannot be controlled by erroneous beliefs when you understand that the only mind you possess, and which you possess, is God. There is no illusory mind to create or to set sanction false creation. Why attempt any further to explain nothingness, which such efforts can only result in defeat? God is all in all, self-explanatory. The universe is no longer an enigma. The mystery of God is finished. We are now perceiving that we are actually gods, goods, own likeness, right here in the only heavenly universe there is. This perception has set us free from all false beliefs of mortal mind and materiality, and has opened wide the portals of immortality through which we perceive ourselves as the wisdom, knowledge, and power of God, which Paul referred to as Christ, the infinite idea. Identifying ourselves with the Christ enables us to master the infinite idea. When you have perceived the oneness of God and man, you will no longer appear to be mortal or material, but you will understand that you are pure spirit, individualized as soul, the eye of you, a good, godlike man. Through this spiritual perception of the Christ, you will attain unlimited beauty, joy, and happiness, a perfect state of existence right here in the only tangible and real world that was ever created. Man-made theories dealing with suppositional material world and mortal mind have given way, for they have failed to comfort in times of apparent distress. They are absolutely devoid of the Christ power and cannot be recognized or considered if we are to be loyal to the one power. Jesus said, But the Comforter shall teach you all things. The Comforter is here and has led us into an absolute understanding of our true relationship to good. It has revealed the mystery hid from the beginning, that we are godlike being, living in the world of reality, heaven governed by the principle of all good or God now. The Comforter has revealed the fact that we do not have to struggle to attain our divinity. We have but to accept it as Jesus did, and our demonstrations are assured. We do not have to become spiritual. We are spiritual and perfect now. An inability to explain soul has caused the majority of thinkers to believe in a supernatural power or mind called God, and a natural, all-powerful evil, which has been falsely termed mortal mind. 
The entertainment of such false belief is directly responsible for one's inability to demonstrate the almost of God. The illumination of absolute truth reveals the fact that error is not even an illusion and establishes the inspiration of love and truth as the only admission to the kingdom of heaven, the presence of God. There are no arguments in truth, for there is no sense of separation or opposition in the all-inclusive divine mind. Truth is not a method which one uses to approach principle. Truth is the Christ. We can prove it ourselves. All utterances of the truth are divine, for they emanate from the one and only mind. Principal mind is the only thinker, speaker, actor, therefore, truth proclaims itself by means of its consciousness, man. The infallibility of absolute truth cannot be demonstrated until the latter, as well as the spirit, bears witness to good. Words that are not consistent with life, truth, and love can never reveal the nature of God. The inspiration of an illumined consciousness empties the old bottles of all false belief and fills them with the new wine of spiritual perception. Unless we accept but one power and live it, we can never demonstrate the principle of our being or enjoy the fruits of the Spirit. Absolute truth cannot be reduced to a system or form of practice. Its principle is discerned spiritually.